<clears throat> hey everybody welcome welcome to daily reflections with chris my name's chris and i'm in recovery from alcoholism um for those of you who don't know i'm chris uh I, just to share my experience strength and hope with you guys i started a youtube channel it's called daily reflections where i read from the daily reflections which is a uh, reflective meditative book for um people in recovery written by people in recovery and every day there's a new entry and today is november the 12th and if it's okay i'll get started you'll see the background probably a little bit different than usual i am in a different city today i am in south padre island at a, a convention a hispanic convention for the southern part of texas and um <clears throat> it's been uh it's been interesting and it's been awesome uh, for those of you also who don't know, I do translate for the uh, Southwest Texas Area 68, which is the southern west part of Texas. We have a whole area where I get to translate for, for them uh, from English to Spanish. So they invited me just to come and have fun. This is not a gig. This is this is just a for fun. Um, am I translating? Yes, of course, because there's some people from English. From, I happen to have one of the um, the delegates also here, so I'm also translating for her. But I do have a service work commitment, so that's why I'm here mostly, and also to have fun and to get to know what their culture is really like. That was one of the commitments I I gave to I I made for myself. When I took on this position as the area translator or the area bilingual chair, that I wanted to get to know the culture. I wanted to get to know how do they really speak. I wanted to get to know what what motivates them. What what is important to them? How do they carry a meeting? How do they? What books do they use right to live their daily lives, um, useful and free and and happy? So what are, what are the tools that they kind of get? And I I really enjoyed it so much that I actually. I used to go to only English speaking meetings. Now I go mostly Spanish. And uh, so once in a while, you know, I got to get back to my roots. So I go English. But um, Spanish group is my home group now. And it's something that I've really enjoyed. It's something, it's a new experience that I've been having since I joined them. So for 20, or actually in 2022 right now, 2022 has really, has really changed my life in a way that I never expected because... I didn't realize this is what I was going to get out of hanging out with them. So, uh, moving on, let's let's uh, get into our reading, our reading, if that's okay. <laughs> our reading, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. It feels different when you're out of town. But I've seen my mentor do it, and I was hoping one day I'd be able to do it, and today's that day. So, here we are. It's November the 12th. It says, Morning Thoughts. Ask him in your morning meditation what, can you, what you can do each day for the man who is still sick. And that's straight out of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, page 164. For many years, I pondered over God's will for me, believing that perhaps a great destiny had been ordained for my life. After all, having been born into a specific faith, hadn't I been told early that I was chosen? It finally occurred to me, as I considered the above passage, that God's will for me was simple, that I practiced step 12 on a daily basis. Furthermore, I realized I should do this to the best of my ability. I soon learned that the practice aids me in keeping my life in the context of the day at hand. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read that over again. For many years, I pondered over God's will for me, believing that perhaps a great destiny had been ordained for my life. After all, having been born into a specific faith, hadn't I been told early that I was chosen? If finally... Finally, occurred to me as I considered the above passage that God's will for me was simple. It was that I practiced step 12 on a daily basis. Furthermore, I realized I should do this to the best of my ability. I soon learned that the practice aids me in keeping my life in the, in the context of the day at hand. Yep. Folks. I don't know about you, but I don't know what you've been going through. But this, you know, sometimes I read these and I'm like, oh, that's good. Let's talk about that, right? Because maybe it's something you're going through or maybe it's something I'll go through in the future. Um, 
so I get to talk about the literature a lot, right? And I am going to talk about the literature because that's what I, that's what guides me. That's what I use. That is what my that's where my um, <clears throat> my ammunition comes from, right? So that I could combat these these sharp turns or these things that get me off balance or that <clears throat> make me feel a certain way that I hadn't felt in a long time or that I'm feeling again, right? Or uh, it keeps me uh, from making. It helps me, it guides me to making decisions to live in my life a certain way. Uh, when I came in here, I didn't know what my life, how to live my life, what it would be like, what to expect. But I knew that, um, you know, I always, I was a huge dreamer. I was a big dreamer, a grand dreamer ever since I was a kid. So being sober now, that hasn't really gone away as, and um, if I'm not careful, that could be really harmful to my life, right? Yes, I am destined for great things. Yes, I am chosen. Yes, I'm gonna do great things. Yes, I'm gonna be that man. Yes, 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 all that is true. I'm destined to be that. I feel like God already has told me that, that I'm gonna be this. I'm gonna be the first person in my family to do this. I'm gonna be the first person in my family to do that. And sometimes I feel like I'm gonna, that, that because they say I'm gonna be the first person to, um, be the millionaire in my family or I'm going to be the first uh, that I'm going to get promoted or elevated I feel like oh my god I'm going to be the GM I'm going to be the I'm going to be the CEO and I might still be that but this reflection is talking about what is it my job to be right now today because I get lost in my what I want and what they said I was going to be and I'm not there yet so what's going on who's dropping the ball here and uh, you know it's easy for me to blame other people from for me not succeeding when this book reminds me my mentor reminds me the people around me remind me that it's my job it's my responsibility not to force things not to step on people's feet to get what i want it's my responsibility to take care of myself and sometimes it doesn't happen overnight i mean might have ruined my life overnight so i'm not gonna you know, my, my progress in my life is not going to be overnight. Did, did I get some really good, um, did some really great things happen to me where I got elevated quicker than I was supposed to? Yeah, for sure. It happens to me all the time. But I get stuck into, what? Well, yeah, I'm bigger, I'm greater, I'm more now. But that's what I want. How, how do I get that? And it's great, but for me, it's healthy to stay where I am for as long as I need to stay. And I don't get to make that decision today. I let God do that. I want God to do that because God does it better. God, it, God knows exactly where I belong. God knows exactly where I'm going to do the best job for him, right? Not for my wants and needs and whatever. He provides. And man, I'll go over and over. I can tell you stories of how he's provided for me even when I don't want to as long as I do what 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 he wants for me so and now what is that i don't know every morning i gotta ask him i ask him in my morning meditation what i can do for the man who is still sick it's not what i can do so i can be elevated it's not what i can do so i can move up the ladder at work it's not what i can do so i can impress my boss it's not what i can do to get rich no it's what can i do for the man who is still sick it's very simple the purpose that i have today is simple it's so simple just what can I do? Maybe it's shaking his hand, introducing myself to him or her and be like, hey, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Man, those those first, if they're new or if they're, you know, a little shaky, maybe they've been here for a while and they're bored with, they want to go out. A shake of the hand, it goes a very long way. It says, I see you. I see you in this room. Good morning. My name is Chris. How's your day? What can I do for you? Would you like some coffee? Open their door. Lead them to their seat, you know, show them a book, give them a pamphlet, something. There's always something there. You know, every time I, um, I'm i out to do his will, it, it's the, the, the stuff is there. An extra chair for a conversation, that space for a conversation, an extra cup of coffee, an extra taco, something. Hey, hey um, how's it going? You want to talk? You know what I read? You know what I saw? Man, that was great. You know what happened to me yesterday? And it's, it, they don't, maybe they don't even care. Say, have you ever had that experience happen to you? You know, just get into it with them. The man who's sick and suffering, we don't know what they're going through. Just like nobody knew what I was going through. And they, man, 
They could, first of all, they couldn't pry it out of me, but they could be there and be like, hey, you're not alone. We're here with you, right? Maybe it's giving somebody a ride home, right to the airport, right to the meeting. Maybe it's just having a conversation with them. Maybe it's just sitting with them doing nothing. I used to do that a lot. I used to do that a lot with my sister. Our hangout time was just sitting there with her, not asking her for nothing, not trying to give her advice on anything. Just sitting there watching a movie with her or just sitting there in silence with her. She loved that. It was her favorite thing to do with me. Folks, when I mean sick and suffering, I don't just mean alcoholism, okay? There's other things going on in this world. Pretty much this is telling me, Chris, get your head out your ass, right? I'm sorry to be vulgar. I'm sorry to say that. But sometimes I got to tell my own self that because guess what? My friends sometimes are too nice. They won't tell me. Or they're too laid back. They'll let me flat fall flat on my face before they say anything, right? Why? Because sometimes for me, I got to experience it. I got to just experience it just to know. Hey, Chris, that doesn't work no more, dude. Like... Drinking and drugging? Like what happened to you the last time you did? You wanted to kill yourself. Come on. But who? I'm, I'm stubborn and I'm hard at it. That's why it says right here. And I read it two or three times. It finally, 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 finally occurred to me. I finally got it. I finally realized. I had that moment where I was like, I need to stop doing that. I want to stop doing that. I don't want to ever do that again. God help me be different. Help me get out of myself. Why don't I have any friends? Because all I do is think about is me. I never think about anybody else. Selfish and self-centeredness. That was my problem. It tells me in the big book over and over. And, and I always, every time I read it, I'm like, oh, no, that's that guy. Oh, that's you. That's mm -mm, that's not me. You should. Do you know what I do? Oh, my God. You don't know how much I, I think to myself. You don't know how much I do here, do here, or service work, la, la, la. So I was working by myself. There is nobody in this hotel room with me. I am by myself. There's nobody blowing up my phone asking me where I am. Because I've been selfish. I could do all these YouTube videos, folks. I'm realizing today I could do all these YouTube videos. I could be as charming as hell. I could have so much charisma. But man, the inside could still be ratchet. That's what I got to work on. The inside. When I first got here, they told me, when the inside changes, the outside changes. And I was like, what does that mean? Why do y'all talk like that? Why do y'all talk and why do y'all say things that people who are new can't understand? <laughs> and I started to realize that the, the more I applied myself to the program, I started working these steps. I started taking the suggestions of my sponsor and my life. Got, I started changing on the inside. Because what now I had to admit that I was powerless over alcoholism and that it had made my life completely unmanageable. Two, I can't do it on my own. I need help. That's a big one for me. They gave a whole step to that because that's a big one for me to be able to say, I can't do it alone. I need help. And three, to ask for help from a higher power. I choose to call it God. Right? God help me. Why? Nobody else could. No human power could ever leave my alcoholism, my insanity, my way of being, my thoughts. Four, let's inventory all your resentments, all your fears, all these old um, ideas. Right? And when I did that, man, I felt like that was my space to be able to just be mad at everybody, mad at my parents, mad at my upbringing, mad at my childhood, mad at my teachers, mad at whoever made me feel a certain way, whoever told me something I didn't really like, mad at the police, mad at my old belief systems, mad at the culture I was brought, not the culture as like Hispanic, but sometimes, you know, I watched a lot of TV and I would always compare myself, my life to their life. And I would see I hate my life because I want that life. 
And then you really, you grew up and you realize that their walls were just cardboard boxes. And that so-and-so was an alcoholic and this guy was effing with this guy and this girl. And there was a lot of abuse going on behind the scenes of those popular TV shows, right? So to me, on the outside, their life looked perfect, but I didn't really know what was going on behind scenes, right? Step five, I get to share that with somebody. And that's something I hadn't done. I hadn't shared my life with nobody. My dreams, my desires, I kept that all to myself. I wouldn't let nobody know, not even my mom, not even my sister. I would just keep to hold all that in, right? Six, I get to look at all the stuff that I'm, all these bad habits I, I, all these bad habits that, that I accumulated over the years that has made my life miserable. Some of them were, hard, were easier to stop doing than others. Some of them were ingrained in me. They were survival mechanisms. I couldn't let them go, even though I knew they were killing me, but I couldn't let them go. But in seven, when I'm ready, I get to ask God, God, I can't let this go. This is a hard one for me. I've used this all my life, and it's got me everything that I wanted. Help me. And then God gets to remove that. I get to ask him again, remove that, right? And eight, I make a list of those people that I have harmed. That some of those never even did it. I, I, they never did anything wrong to me, and I harmed them, right? Like my family. Nine, I get to go out there and make amends to them the best way I can, whether it's living amends, direct amends, or indirect amends, right? That I get to be different today, whether they're dead or alive. I get to show, hey. I get to make an, uh, an apologize to them and say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make that right. And if I'm not willing, then I'm not ready to do step nine. But when I'm willing, I'm ready. And so I go out there and I do step nine. Ten, take that daily inventory. What did I do today? Who did I, who did I, who did I, who is I rude to? How can I make it right? Can I make it right? Make amends. If I can make it right, I need to make an amends. I do it immediately, right? Talk to somebody about it. Hey, sponsor, let me process these thoughts. This is what I want to do. I want. I think I should make an amends for this. This is what happened. This, you know, talk this out with somebody. Check in. It's called a check in. And then in eleven, I get to pray and I meditate and say, God, what can I do for you today? God, I just want to connect with you. I just want to connect. Let's just connect. It's that simple. Meditation is that simple. The answers will come, they say. God doesn't have to, I don't have to hear an answer from him right now. If I get one, cool. But the answers will come. And 12, I get to share this with you. I get to share what I've learned. I get to share what I've been through. I get to share this with you, with others about me. It's not all AA talk. It's just, I've learned how to be a gentleman. I get to share that with you. I've learned some pretty good jokes. I get to share that with you. I've learned that a life worth living, has, I found it in Alcoholics Anonymous, and I get to share that with you. Not the program. I get to share my life, the results of working the program. I get to share that with you. This is a program of attraction, not promotion. And I've learned that a little bit about that yesterday at this particular convention, right? If I was mad all the time, would anybody want to be a part of this? No, they don't want to be a part of my life. They don't want to get next to me. Well, they say, hey, Chris, how are you? Yeah, absolutely. Man, you're different today. You want to talk about this? Yeah, they'll say that, but I'm always grumpy every single day. Would anybody want to know what I'm doing? No. When I smile every day, for real, authentic smile, sometimes I got to fake it, right? I faked it when my mom died. I had to because I was in the public eye, but... Man, authenticity goes a long way, and people know that. Come on. People can tell a fake from two two blocks away. I don't care how how dumb they seem. They can tell when you're fake. But the authentic kind of life that I get to live, when I'm practicing these principles, when I'm in my morning thoughts, when I'm thinking of the sick and suffering person, when I'm th and when I'm thinking about what am I bringing to the table, not just about what I'm going to take. My life is different. It's so different. It's, it comes from a different point of view, a different perspective, uh, from a different pair of glasses. I mean, it's just, it's unstoppable. Folks, I encourage you today. I want to encourage you today because I know our time's limited here. 
and I'm almost, I'm almost need to be done before this video gets too long. So I want to encourage you today. Try one thing different today. Try and seeing things from one different angle today. Instead of looking at it like this, look at it like that. Instead of looking at it like what you think it is, start looking at it as what, what is it? God, what, what is it? Okay, you wanted me to see that? What do you want me to do with it? You wanted me to hear that? What do I want me to do with it, right? Ask for help if you don't know what to do with it. Get with people who, you know, I've been there. Man, I, I don't know how to do a resume. God, let me go ask Johnny. Let me go ask Steve. They know how they, they've done it. Let me go ask them how, how to change the spark plug. Let me go ask them how, what, what they did, if, if they ever did it. Let me get on Google. Every, you know, but people, connect with people. That's another thing that's the same. Make connection. Make a connection with another person. Folks, because sometimes it's, the man who's, thick, who's still sick is me. What can I do for me today? Yeah, I have to ask myself that. I can't leave myself out. Some Sometimes it's get to a meeting. Get to service work. Make some coffee. Get out there, ask somebody. Go help somebody. Mow the grass, something, whatever, anything, right? So, folks, I uh, hope I encourage you to do something different today, to live your life to the fullest because we only got one. And uh, more than anything, I just want to tell, tell you thank you for taking your time out this morning or this evening this afternoon. Uh, to listen to this video and there's more so please look around if you're interested subscribe to my channel um i'm trying to get 2000 just because i think i have five uh so maybe one day but for now um thank you thank you to my subscribers thank you for those who tune in thank you for those who um who listen to me <laughs> not that they do what i say but that they hear what i say <laughs> and i appreciate that uh, so thank you for your time, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.